Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Today we have a very exciting doll to repaint. It is Moonlight Jewels vinyl figurine Bean. I did not get her from the original pre-order. My Bean was one of the leftover ones that she put out for sale later. I do believe Bean is now sold out. First I was not sold on Bean's design, but decided to get her later anyway, mostly for creating content and to support Elisa and her art. Spoilers! I really love how she turns out in the end, so make sure to watch the entire video. I had no plan on how I was going to repaint her, so that's why I chose to get mine in white, instead of the mint green that was the other option. She comes with two head sculpts and three different magnetic charms for her chest. I ended up not using the charms in the end and I only repainted one of her heads for now. I really love her face once I'm done with it, so I might repaint the second head after all. If you have any ideas, leave them down below. The blank figurine did not really excite me, that's why it took me so long to paint her. She got pushed back several times in favor of other projects. When I had had her for a while, she really started to remind me of my favorite childhood cartoon, The Moomins. There is just something about her chubby features that scream Moomin to me. The Moomins is what I decided to use as inspiration and create a little cat creature inspired by the Moomin universe by Tove Jansson. The figurine comes with this very cute design sheet. It was so pretty that I decided to take a copy of it to not ruin it, thinking I could do some practice rounds and then create a really pretty concept drawing. But I was too impatient and only made the quick sketch ones. And the final design ends up changing from my sketches quite a bit. I start the process by removing the inset eyes. I used the handle of my paintbrush to pop them out. The eye holes are a little messy on the inside, so I use my Dremel to clean up the area and make it easier in the future to put the eyes back in. I then spray the head with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. I create a custom mix of Pan Pastels to color my bean. I am a 90s child and loved watching Moomin. In the old version of the Moomin cartoon, there was an episode where the Moomin house turns into a jungle because of Lil Moo. And Haisuli releases all the animals from the zoo into the jungle. In the mix of zoo animals are two tigers. I use them as the starting point for my bean design. I also love the episode about a puppy dog called Surku who believes that he is actually a wolf. Surgo tries to rejoin his so-called family, but the wolves are not really happy about it. In the end, Surgo is saved from the wolves and he realizes that he is not a wolf, but a dog instead. While working on my bean, I kind of created a similar story in my head where my bean pretends to be a tiger, but at last she is just a normal tabby cat. That's why she is more brown than orange and her stripes will be brown instead of black. I left an area white on her head on purpose because I knew I wanted to add a flower crown. I really like the flower designs that Tuve Jansson created for Moomins. They are so whimsical and fun and kind of tropical looking. So I had to include a bunch of them in my bean. Thank you. 
I lay down a white base for the future flowers to go on top of. I then seal her face with MSC. To color the flowers, I use my watercolor pencils. I test out the colors on a small section before doing all of them. I start out with the blue flowers and then the green leaves and last the red flowers. The blue flowers get a center with white first and then yellow and orange. I seal my work to set the pencils in and to be able to add more color on top. The face is quite simple this time because we are not drawing the eyes. I seal the face one last time before I move on working with the inset eyes. She comes with eye molds which is great because I have never done inset eyes. I have always been curious about making them, but working with resin has intimidated me. I don't know what I was so afraid of, because in the end, these eyes were very easy to make. I paint the eyes blue and I also add a darker rim just at the edge to create some detail. I will be using Creartech Cold Glaze Resin. It is meant for shallow pores, only maximum of 20 millimeters. The eyes are definitely shallower than that, so it should be fine. This resin needs to be mixed with equal proportions of hardener and resin. I then proceeded to protect myself with the correct respirator and gloves. Please take this seriously, resin can be very harmful for your health. You will also need a place where the resin can cure without anyone being in the room with it. I open up the bottle and the resin is all cloudy and clumpy. Luckily, the instructions do mention what to do if this happens. They say to heat up the resin in warm water and then let it cool a bit. And it worked great. The resin is all clear and clump free now. I take extra good care of drizzling out the same amount from both bottles. I don't bother with measuring cups because I will need such a small amount. I then mix very thoroughly. You do not want any unmixed resin, this will result in some parts not curing and turning sticky. I use a torch to pop some of the bubbles caused by the rigorous mixing. The end result will have some bubbles in them, but I don't mind. I resisted the urge to add some sparkly bits to the eyes. In the show, the eyes are super simple and most of the characters don't even have pupils. Just a solid color for both the iris and the pupil. I set the eyes to cure in a room that we don't use daily. And after 24 hours, the eyes are all cured. And they are so cute for such simple eyes. Now what is left to do is to insert them into the head. This was very finicky and getting the eyes to point at the same direction was very hard. But with enough finesse, I got there in the end. Now it's time to do the body. I spray the main body, arms and the tail separately with Mr. Super Clear. This way I know there will be an even coat of sealant on every surface. I cover the belly with masking tape so that it remains white. 
I used the same custom mixed pan pastels to color the body. The face took me three to four layers of pastel to get a nice coverage. So I will do the same here. I want the feet to remain white as well, so I use a kneaded eraser to clean them off, same as I did with the whiskers on her face. Third coat of sealant. In between the layering I add some details. I color the tip of her tail and toes darker just like her ears are. After spraying the doll again I peel off the masking tape. Sorry for this being so off-center. It's been a while since I filmed. I think I'm a bit rusty. My camera died so I did a little bit of work off-screen. I painted the flowers with a white base coat and then decided to do the background colors of the scenery. To be honest, I should have waited to do the flowers after the scenery, but I didn't for some reason. I think in my head I was saving on MSC, but in reality I was not. I don't like the texture of the pencils, so I use some water and a brush to blend them in. She is not a tabby cat without her stripes. I use the watercolor pencil as a guideline before doing the stripes with acrylic paint. I heated all the bits with a hairdryer to make them soft. This way it's easier to put the limbs back together. After assembly, I felt like her back was too empty. A couple of lines in brown will create much needed stripes on her back. I did forget to remove the watercolor pencil marks from her tail. That's why I used acrylic paint for the stripes before the next coat of sealant. So my guidelines are visible on the finished figurine, which is a bummer. I layer more watercolor on the tummy to make the colors rich and vibrant. I add some tree trunks with blue acrylic paint. After a fresh coat of sealant, which I apparently forgot to film, I add in some shadows with a pencil. I then mix a nice color of blue with acrylic paint and dab in the leaves of the biggest tree. You might wonder why I mix acrylic with watercolor. That's because acrylic sets itself. This way I don't have to spray the doll every single time I want to add more paint to an area that already has some. And acrylic paint is not as wet as watercolor, so it's a less of a risk of reactivating some of the other paints when I layer stuff. I want to add some of the whimsy back into the scenery, so I paint in a string of lights going from tree to tree. While I have the white paint out, I will add in my little characters like Lilu Mu and a group of Hattivatti. Lil Mu and Hattivattis are some of my favorite Moomin characters of all time. I also really like Haisuli, Nipsu and Mörke. Thank you. 
I can now add in all the solid colors one by one, starting with red. Painting the belly really felt like decorating Easter eggs. I think it's the shape. I then spray the figurine to seal the paints in. Or so I thought. I was hoping getting away with using a pencil for the line work, but it's adding a lot of texture and I don't like it. So I thought I can just use a q-tip and water to take the pencil off because I had sealed it previously. But the watercolor still reacted and created a whole mess. I patched things up and decided to just seal it again and use some black acrylic paint to cover up the pencil the best I could. I use some matte varnish to really protect my work. And then I put the head back on the body. And she is all done. Well, almost done. I did decide to redo the flowers on her head. They were not as vibrant as her tummy flowers and it was bugging me off. I really, really love how she came out. I think she really looks like a original Moomin character straight from Tuve Jansson's imagination. Moomins are filled with funny and quirky names. I decided to call my tabby cat Babu, which means bean in Finnish. And I think there could totally be a character called Babu in the Moomin world. I really thought it would not take me any time to repaint her. But the minute I started, I realized I could have never done my original design of different characters all over her body. I'm glad it changed. I feel this way she looks more cohesive. As a Finnish person, Moomins are a big part of my life. And I bet if you open up any Finnish person's cupboard, you will find at least one Moomin mug in there. Tell me in the comments what was your childhood favorite cartoon or book that's still meaningful to you this day. Thank you guys so much for watching! Subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think of Papu. Until next time, bye!